what's up people so this is part three of three those are those are renovation videos bunch of renovation going on here if you're interested what episode one and two was about not even gonna explain down in the description somewhere let's just pick up not much to do anymore so let's start off with the blade fixator arm so this blade uh, fixator thing you can see that there's a diagonal there but for some reason somebody has got this off there is nothing here and this side has been just well i would assume a weld has broken we can see weld break marks here so the most probable scenario is that previous owner when this broke he did not care about it just removed the arm and carried on but uh, check the damage out every time this frame part goes into swing mode it grinds against the track you know i could probably keep going but eventually it will cut itself through that steel plate and then then uh, then i would need to fix it but i would rather try to prevent that so let's add a steel bar between these two connections you know what guys i think i need to start it up the the blade it's uh, it's not in the center it's a bit off to that side and you know, the most thing that i'm interested about is what is the oil pressure reading now so let's start it up let it warm up on the spot and um, hopefully it will be more than one because that's what it was before I knew I forgot something, but I couldn't remember it. Freaking fuel valve. I, I closed them, but I forgot to reopen them. What a moron. Now there's a bunch of air in the system. And if you recall, this tractor does not have a priming pump. So I, I got to get the air out somehow. Okay, so Steve told me that um, this valve up here uh, just open it up and let the engine spin over for a while. getting fuel up to the injector tubes I mean I have fuel here I have fuel there I have fuel in the filters next up should be this area but I'm not getting through anything 
That's why it sucks to not have a primer bump. If I had a primer bump, I should I would just be able to bump the thing up. I think somebody has hijacked the primer bump. I can fix something. Okay, people, here's the current situation on the fuel problem. Steve kind of sent a bunch of useful information my way. Sent me a diagram how the fuel is supposed to flow in this um, ding. It has three valves on the fuel tank. So one, two and three. This is the main supply valve that supplies fuel to the pump. This is the drain valve which you can use to drain the fuel tank. And this is the return valve. But it kind of goes full circle. Fuel comes from somewhere there into the refinery, then it proceeds into that thing. Then the fuel kind of does some stuff in there, eventually comes out from this part into the fuel filters. And from the filters, it comes down back to the pump. And because I have fuel coming from that tiny nut area there, we can confirm that I have fuel in the filters and also back at the pump. But I'm not getting any fuel to the injectors. So these are completely dry. So from somewhere here to here, there is a air bubble in the way. There is two more things that I can try. And if I do those and it still does not start, I'm completely out of ideas. I could try to open the blanchers up and try to bleed some air through those. And another thing I could try is to put some pressure in the fuel tank. I'm gonna take them out one by one and then, then try to bleed the system. Look at some dirt there. Pretty sure it should not be there. Okay, well, let's make that pressure thing for the gas tank. I think I can use this hole, but I would need to modify it a bit. I love modifying stuff.
I think this will work fine to put some pressure in the gas tank. Right now though, rainwater will very easily get into the tank. So let's fix that. Fix that. Not here. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Custom bleed vent thing for the gas tank mm -hmm. also with the roof and I should be able to use it nicely to put some pressure in the fuel tank as well win 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 don't ever well put a lot of pressure inside a fuel tank. These things are not really designed for that. They can um, well explode. I think I'm not gonna go over too far. That should be more than enough.
basically guys pretty sure I'm just gonna weld this uh, these two valves completely shut it took me five freaking hours and at least two people to bleed the fuel lines I had to tape this entire gas tank cap although I added a seal the thing was just leaking everywhere so while my Santa Claus was bumping air into the fuel tank I was able to bleed the blanchers out and uh, that did the trick guys you need at least two people to bleed the fuel lines which kind of sucks also the oil pressure guys the, even after warming up it was still above three with the old oil it was just sitting at one now we just got to keep an eye on that oil level if it starts to go up then um, then there's something leaking into the sump I still believe it's diesel but um, yeah now, I could avoid the diesel problem if I shut off the fuel from back there but uh, I don't really want to go through this again I mean this this was sort of a nightmare so much work just to get the fuel line split not worth it I'd rather change the oil once per year or fix whatever is leaking into the engine there's an idea anyway let's carry on our list of things to do so I'm gonna leave the blade in the air for a moment while I can center it Okay guys, pretty much dead center now. Wonder if this thing has a hydraulic lock on it. When the engine is not running, can I lower the blade or not? I suppose that answered our question. Bro, the moment I put this thing down, it, uh, it's just kind of... Man, bro, why? Stupid douchebag. with my hand this thing will break my arm
kind of a sucky situation right now. It's fine though. You guys like sucky situations. Wish I had some C4 right about now. What the hell? I just found a key in the mod. Mod that was under the engine bay. Is that turkey? Seems turkey. Okay, so they're pretty straightforward. From eye to eye, need a distance of about 109 and a half. And that's about it. Gonna use this piece in between the two eyes. That should do. I think I need a new blade. Let's do a little test cut. Very strange. You know, sometimes when I'm cutting really rusty old Soviet steel, this thing really lacks in that. It can hardly cut any of that. But uh, the day is made in China, mild steel. It's like cutting paper, bro. Not sure why this stuff is a lot harder.
Or that could happen. Well, sucks for me, I guess. Ignore that bit, guys. I'm, uh, well, a moron. Well, let's go have a look if it fits. Because I kind of still use a banana to measure things. You know what they say guys, if it fits. I didn't know. I forgot the rest. does anything at all. You know, overall, I'm pretty happy. But um, this joint has the most amount of play now. But I'm not really gonna fix that. I think it's not that important. The most important thing for me right now is that the frame does not grind against the track anymore. Let's just move on. Been a while, but we can do another X mark. Anyway, next up would be to build a mid-year shield for the piston rams but before I do that I want to see if I can add a couple of grease fittings so the entire blade system it has uh, these stationary joints or rather pipes it has uh, three of them one two and three and these do not require any grease fitting they don't actually move that much their only purpose is to kind of stabilize the well the plow but what kind of bustles me is why doesn't this tilt cylinder have any crease fittings this will definitely get some movement it would benefit from a couple of fittings so i'm gonna try to add a fitting here and also here but i'm not really 100 percent sure i will achieve that this might be quite tough steel to go through. Now, I'm not really worried about the top part, but that thing in there. But um, let's try anyway. I'm pretty sure I'm not drilling anymore. It's like I've hit something solid. And it just can't continue. Hard stuff. Don't mind me, I'm just destroying a bunch of brand new... 
drill bits here. Oh man, this, this really sucks. Can't go through. I don't know guys, I think I'm think I'm gonna give up. Can't get through that thing. I've dulled like seven drill bits by now and I'm not making any progress anymore. You know, I'm just gonna leave it here, like sort of a fake fitting, until I can figure out how to penetrate that hardened steel sheen. This side though, it does not have that hardened steel, should be pretty smooth sailing. Basically for this side, I think I need some serious drill bits. It's just your standard high-speed steel will not cut this thing. Yeah. Next order of business. Hope it's not getting boring or anything. I mean, it's just me trying to maintain this thing. Kind of boring. But um, we are almost finished, so... Might as well. So I wanted to add some type of um, shielding to the rod, but I'm not sure how feasible that plan is. I think the only option I have is to build something on the eye, so that thing would travel over this area. If I build something to the ram, I would have some length limitations. How far it would travel before smashing into the blow. I think let's try to build something, um, weld, it, weld it here, and then um, see how it works. If it works, make a second one as well. Okay, before I move any further with this, this idea, I'm gonna pull the blade all the way in. I'm thinking I might have some clearance issues if I try to use the tilt function. That's not gonna work. It would work if uh, I did not use this at all. This tilt function is actually quite useful. You tilt the blade and try to break up the roots with just that one corner. Honestly, I don't really see any options here. Let's be honest. Also, I can't think of anything else. So... Okay. Let's try to find that radiator leak now. Leaking, leaking. That uh, red stuff. It came from that thing. I guess I overfilled it a bit. Where is the leak? Hope it's nothing serious. Like a busted hose or something. Everything is dry down here. Ah! I'm guessing it's this. Oh, never mind. That's just a, just some stupid hydraulic leak. Not important. And the engine is green. Got some green here. 
Obviously somewhere from here, but visually I can't see anything dripping. Well, considering the fact that the water pump should be right there, and the pool is right under the water pump, then it just might be a water pump seal. But I can't confirm that right now, because currently it's not leaking, so... Let's start it up, see if that helps me to clarify things. I love starting this thing up. Always puts a smile on my face. Okay, well after stopping the engine we see some leaking going on. I guess while the engine is running there is pressure in the system so uh, it doesn't leak then but what do we even have here? This is just a support frame. So it, that means it, it has to come from up there, the water bump. Maybe I will get a better picture if I clean this up. European I hope I don't get too wet, but it doesn't matter really, it's gonna suck anyway.
basically I'm thinking that Didn't help. Take a good look guys, this is as clean as you'll ever be. And I got the engine block quite clean. There's still mountains of conk everywhere. Even if your pressure washer was doing like 60,000 psi, I think you would have a bunch of holes everywhere, but it would still be dirty. I told you this would be fun. Be right back. Yep, I can see the leak, guys. It's... Water pump. Probably the seal. Well, there is no seal there, to be honest. It's, uh, it's silicon. Currently can't tell from here if it's the seal or something else, but... It's the water pump. Also, I noticed I had a small leak from from whatever this hole is for but the leak is very mild don't even care about that look at the bright side it's always better if the coolant leak outside of the engine rather than inside the engine that's always a better option I'm gonna drain the radiator.
It doesn't look that bad. This is probably the first fluid that I'm draining from this machine which remotely actually looks pretty good. I was expecting more gunk, but very minimal. Yeah, the coolant actually not half bad. Another great thing that we can clearly clarify right now. There is no oil in the coolant, so the head gasket is just dandy. Great success. Okay, the first one broke, the second one is, well, stripped. Bro Again, I'm pretty sure I'm unable to remove this part. But maybe I don't even need to. Perhaps I can just remove that plate up there. One last bolt to undo. It's really down there. Something's turning at least. Can't tell. those bolts again great you know it's possible that it may have leaked through this area but um, I don't think so because the water was coming between this area so it can either be this hose but it was dry and checked it can also be this connection here Th that was also dry so I'm just gonna take the entire thing off inspect it and um, Try to get some zeros for it. If I cannot, then we'll go with silicon. I mean, even the engine block on this thing is glued together with silicon. Now, the only reason you do that is either you can't get any zeros for it, or you're just a moron. I'm thinking it's the first option. Getting parts for this machine is... There's only one more company left in Estonia that officially sells parts for this machine. As I talked to them about a week ago, they told me that parts are becoming scarier and scarier. thing is really stuck.
вот. Why is it so loose? Well, maybe the bump, maybe the bump is just loose. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna tighten it up, see if that fixes it. I mean, the bottom bolts here, are, there is just totally loose. You should have probably checked this before. I'm almost positive it was just loose. Because the bottom two nuts, you could almost spin them by hand. They were just so loose. I can't be 100% sure of that, so... Let's, see that. Let's just do a test. If it starts to leak, I need to take it off. Probably reseal it. I guess paint is a good sealant as well. Actually, I think this is a gasket. Oh yeah. Whoopsie. This is a gasket. And it looked weird. Just in case though, I'm gonna add a little bit. See the cone. This silicon is specially designed for water pumps. So I should be on the safe side. Looks like the capacity is about 55. I will never get tired of starting that thing up. The engine sound is just music. Everything seems dry now. I don't see any leaks. I guess that was it. Just kind of tighten it up a bit. Wow, why did I waste like four hours trying to get it off? Looks dry. If you don't mind me, I'm gonna go kick myself in the bolt now. I will probably mess that up as well. Like, miss the target or something? I don't know. Basically, yeah, I wasted like four hours or something like that. I mean, even Steve, some days ago, told me, check the bump, it might be loose. And I already forgot to check it. Rather, I just start dismantling everything. Oh well, at least we learned something. Getting that bump off is a sort of a nightmare. And I wasn't even half finished yet. But um, let's try to get that belt on somehow. Some of you said I should be able to get it on without taking the entire front end off. Let's see if it will match. 
First things first, I need to get this tension off. That is the only way I can maybe install this thing by pulling it over the blades. One down, two, three, five. Six. Huh. That's it. Yet again, guys, you were right. You can install this thing without dismantling half the machine. At least you guys are smart, unlike me. Stupid camera. Stop stop break dancing here. I'm just trying to install the belt. You know this tractor it's huge. Yet why is there so little room here? I wish there was like at least a couple of miles between each part. That would make servicing so much easier. I could use my e-bike to drive between the components. That would be sweet. Hmm. Can't tell. Is there any room to tighten this thing, or do I need a shorter belt? Bunch of steel in my way, I can't see. Mm. Oh, there's plenty of room there. Yeah, nice. Guys, I'm literally using the camera right now to guide me to that nut there. I think I got it. Kuskil veel kinni ole. Ai pea on ja. Siit palt ka kinni. No miks? You know what guys? Generator tensioning system. It's, it's pure AIDS. Kurag küll no. Mitte muffegi näe. Mini kurgi keneka pingutamine. Võtta ma ei tea pool päeva aega. Lähtsel lõpp. Still doesn't move. Oh, there's more. Four nuts, guys, holding one freaking generator in place. Finally. Man, now I just just gonna rebeat everything. Only backwards. Think we're done. 
think we're finished with that thing. I think I have exhausted my list. Radiator leak. St stupidest fix ever. Generator fan belt. Yep. Got the belt on in like 10 minutes. Tensioning it. Two hours. If only I had a gun. Hey. Mm. Um, check AC. AC. Pretty sure this is the heater, not AC. But uh, does it work? Am I on meth or something? Who the heck cares? Paint job left. So formally I did not plan to do any paint job on the thing. My plan was that um, once I built that big workshop, but that's still like two years away maybe even more so let's just add some paint to the thing. Make it look fresh-ish. So I've been kind of internally debating amongst myself and a couple of friends which method to go. Effectively I have three options. Either I'm gonna go with uh, spray guns, a roller or brush or with a spray gun. Now I opted for kind of kind of a mix of first and second option. So I'm gonna roll it as much as I can, use brush whenever I need it, and really odd spots which I cannot reach will be spray painted. I would go with the compressor method, but uh, man, I just can't be bothered with it. This just seems so much easier. So it is said that um, with a spray gun, you actually use about 30% more paint because it will kind of fly all over the place. With the roller though, you can get really good efficiency. So I went with this um, rust aluminum paint. I've used it a bunch of times on my steel projects. You don't need any primer for this thing. It's sort of a do-in-one solution. And generally I've had great success with it. It is expensive though, like one, one of this, $20. This thing, $60. It, this thing hasn't worked for years. It's still full though. Bet I can puncture a hole somewhere, maybe still use it. Cancer smoke. But anyway guys, uh, let's give it some freshness. I'm not gonna paint any of the moving parts. Also the engine bay. Most likely gonna avoid that as well. It's, it's gonna look a bit better in about two or three minutes.
This is definitely the last time I'm painting something. Right, let's go into my humble office. Ta-da! Looks mildly better. Success. The office, it looks great guys. I like the yellow and black combination. I think the paint job overall came out quite well. So on the cab I put two goats of yellow and the undercarriage got one goat of absolute blackness. I still have a bit of sprocket and tensioner wheel that needs to be painted. But in order for that to happen, I do need to move the machine slightly. And I'm not really sure about the engine. For a moment there, I thought I'm just gonna spray paint the engine as well, but yeah, I would need to douse everything in thick paint. Don't really think that's a good idea. Only if uh, you're doing some sort of a major fix on the engine where you take a lot of parts off until there's only the block left. So you could paint the block and all the parts individually. I've seen people just spray paint entire engines. Don't think that's a good idea. Not gonna do that. I could sort of um, roll or brush this slightly, but I think that would just look like vomit and uh, not gonna do that also. Overall though, I think it looks better. Now I'm not the type of dude who just restores everything to their original value. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to even achieve that if I tried. That just takes way too long time and way too much effort and I lack both of them. So as I've said before, if the thing looks great from Google Maps, then it's okay in my books. I mean, the thing is pretty much finished now and I can't really think of anything else to do on it. But for now, let's uh, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Like a lot. I mean, let's be honest, I thought it would look way cooler. You can't even notice it. Well, you know what they say, guys, or what I say. If it looks like crap, just paint it black. That should be written in some constitution or something. This is gonna suck, unless I used my brains. Apparently I have one of those. Brain things.
check it out guys Soviet washer that's how we roll down in this joint This dozer's technical name is D170 or 1700, whichever is correct. But it also has a nickname. So in Estonia, the thing, the thing is called Yosh. No idea why, but um, that's what it is. So I decided to name it Josef because. You know why? Reasons. Well, it also has that thing there. Technically, though, I have no idea what that means. It's like 4... 4 D M or 3. No idea. But anyway, I need to park this beast now. Somewhere. My mom pretty much told me that do not park it back here or I will execute you. Well, actually, you know what they say, mothers are always right. This is kind of a sucky spot for it anyway. Every time I need a machine, I'm gonna have to turn. Plus, it's probably not very safe. What if that thing just kind of rolled downhill? And then it will smash up my outside crapper. Don't want that. Honestly, I don't really have a lot of good spots to Park Yosef there. I mean, I'm just gonna put it here for now. Uh, it will be under a tree, which is sort of good and sort of bad at the same time. But I still think it's better than the things just standing outside in the sun for months on end. Now, I did get this one idea. Perhaps I can just kind of remove this bit and then make some type of makeshift roof extension deal on this building and perhaps park it there next to the tractor shed let me know what you think about that i personally think why not it would be only temporary though eventually i do plan to park it inside the big workshop which uh, will land on this spot in about billion years By the way guys, when I bought this machine, all the lights on the dash were lit. However, I did not really pay attention to it, mostly because I had no idea what they meant. But um, Steve, Steve guys, he came through yet again. As we speak, the guy is currently also working on uh, his dozer. I think he has a D100. That's like a really, really old model, a lot older than this one is. But still, that machine has not been taken care of by the previous owners. And he's trying to remedy the situation. So if you're interested in old Soviet equipment, check out his channel. I will post it up here somewhere and also down in the description. But anyway, voltmeter which does not work. But 
the generator does work the battery was charging at like 17.8 volts or something like that which is a bit high but i'm guessing the battery was quite empty so maybe it's just that this is the fuel pressure indicator if this light is on then the fuel pressure is low and the sensor itself is located right here on the main on the main filter housing then we have the oil pressure gauge which also does not work but uh, somebody has installed a, a secondary gauge right there uh, which does work then we have the believe it or not gearbox oil pressure indicator same deal if the light is on the gearbox oil pressure is low or there is uh, not enough fluid in the gearbox kind of interesting that this machine has that considering it's um, uh, uh, 40 years old coolant temperature that does work um, so this is this light to be honest I don't really know Steve also is confused about this light a bit I think there's just something lost in translation it says it's some type of EFC readiness to start the diesel engine what the heck does that even mean I don't know but beyond that don't care don't care uh, bunch of lights and this indicator is for the hydraulic system if there is something wrong with that I'm guessing low pressure or lack of fluids
What the hell? Bro, I... Don't be surprised if there will be no videos after this one. That most likely would mean I'm dead. This is not great. Sucks. Basically, I think I will go through like 20 liters of fuel before that engine reaches normal operating temperature. After 30 minutes, the head, it was sitting at 52 something. Coolant temperature showed 44 and the exhaust was 170 something. Man, this huge inline four will take forever to reach 85. By the way, interesting fact about that engine. So it was designed to work in the Arctic, hauling snow 24-7. In the Arctic, you really, you really never shut down these engines. They run non-stop for weeks, maybe months on end. So it should be quite reliable, maybe. And another thing, it's labeled as multi-fuel engine. So you can use diesel, liquid gas will also work. Not sure about gasoline, but I think it might also work on that. Considering it's Soviet, you could probably pump crude oil in there and it would still run. But anyway, guys, kind of getting long now. Weather seems like it's gonna kill me soon, so I rather go inside. But I think we overall did a pretty good service to that thing, hopefully. It will last at least a couple of hours, maybe three. I will, however, go through the comments, all three episodes again. And if I missed something, which is important, rather if I miss a lot of things, I'm gonna make a fourth episode as well. But for now, thanks for watching. Ciao. Yeah, what to do. That's clearly an ecological disaster spot.